Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. When you're in the, in the field with an animal, one animal or, or a whole team, um, you just feel fantastic. You feel like this is your partner and your partner's right there with you. I love it. Charlie Tennyson owns a small farm in Racine, Wisconsin he calls Anarchy Acres. He shares this farm with chickens, goats, and three beloved donkeys, Rosie, Cassie, and Sebastian. On his farm, Charlie raises heritage wheat, corn, and other crops and practices organic draft animal powered farming. He's built from scratch farm implements and tools such as this wheeled plow, a grist mill, a snath for his scythe, a threshing machine, and much more. Readers of our Rural Heritage magazine are already familiar with Charlie as he has become in recent years an important contributor. His instructional articles teach others in detail how to accomplish many of the tasks he performs regularly on his farm, and his inspirational writing motivates readers to accomplish things they had previously been hesitant to attempt. In the summer of 2017, Charlie wrote his first children's book, Rosie's New Harness, and persuaded his friend, Chloe Wright, to create the watercolor illustrations. Rosie's New Harness tells the story of one of Charlie's donkeys that becomes concerned when she notices her harness is missing from the barn. How is she going to help to pull the plow? Later, to Rosie's relief, she learns the farmer has taken the harness away because he was making her a new one that would fit her better. It is a story that extols the virtues of hard work and being part of a team. Rosie's new harness became an instant success. This past fall, Charlie released his second children's book, Popcorn Day, that features the experiences of another of his donkeys. This is the, this is the donkey, Cassie. Um, Sebastian, this donkey normally pulls the cart, but he's lame that day. So Sebast Cassie has to pull the cart instead. She's the shyest donkey, and she really is the shyest donkey that I have, and she's scared to be alone. Um, so this is, this is the farmer um, comforting her in the field, because she, she's all alone, she has to stand still. It's a fall day, the corn stalks are rustling a lot, and uh, it really was a fantastic day that this story was based on, because I grabbed Cassie, I knew she could do it, but it was really one of her first times alone. So I hook her up to the cart, and as soon as I cluck her, she just jumps into the bit, you know, like I, I'm glad I was hanging on to both of them. And uh, thing rattling behind her, so she's dancing all the way down. And I did it smart, you know, I, I made sure when I parked her in the field that she was pointed away from the barn and didn't have much room to run off. But for that first five minutes, you know, I basically held onto the lines and I was doing the corn with one. And she just started to relax and then, and then, um, Maybe by the second cartload, I was just in the field and just tossing the, the corn from as far away. And I think, she, I think she had fun. I certainly had fun and she learned a lot. Um, and then like any animal that you work alone, when she rejoined the team, she's that much better. You know, she just understands the commands um, and the bits. So that's so that, that story. I didn't mean to... Um, <laughs> that was a good story. We're, we're we need about, the we're backstory. About illustrations. Yeah, we need the backstory. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and here's I mean, the... this is how they come to be. You know, Char and Charlie takes a lot of great photos always when he's doing all these projects, which is wonderful for me because we can really yeah. get the feel of what was going on. And, and here's, um, and for the story, we took two things that didn't happen on the same day, but here's poor Sebastian. He's, he's lame. <laughs> and... Um, and, and, and it's agonizing to look at these pictures because poor Sebastian is just... You'd think, you'd think, you'd think he was always lame every yeah. day on the farm. Poor but thing. He's had, he's had grass laminitis once or twice. Okay. And, um, and sure enough, you know, it's always when I need him to do something, so then I have to hitch up one of the other animals, or, or usually it's just the other two, and they have to work that much harder while Sebastian 
I guess to sit around. <laughs> Poor Sebastian. Poor Sebastian. Poor Sebastian. <laughs> so, but, um, and then, and then here's the hero. So there's Cassie. Mm. With poor Sebastian in the background. Yeah, again with poor Sebastian in the background. <laughs> we really so want the children to feel bad. Cassie was just brutal about her. You were just brutal about poor Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a fun story and, uh, and then it ends, of course. Um, Cassie doesn't know that she can, she can do it. Um, Man, boy, there's a lot there's, of there's a lot of popcorn in this story. There's a lot of popcorn. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank so you. so here's here's a friendly farmer I'm picking the corn. It's flying into the cart, and there's Cassie eating away. But I'm just trying to get to the uh, exciting conclusion. Um, Wilhelm. <laughs> here's all the animals. Oh, this she, is a great she, thing. She's hauling up the heavily loaded cart up the hill. Can she make it? They're all the all, all the animals are watching. Yeah. Can can Cassie get up? And then, um, end of the story, uh, Sebastian walks over and nuzzles Cassie, says, thanks for taking care of the cart for me today. And then, big happy ending. Uh, the farmer and his friends have some popcorn while, oh geez, I lost it. Oh, it's at the- uh, Oh, while the other animals friends. are- It's right here. Either. Eating the corn stalks. Yes. So, animals get yeah. corn stalks, and of course, chickens steal a little bit of chickens, popcorn. Yeah, chickens are always getting and something. Yep. People get the popcorn. So, hopefully, mm. um, children who read this story can understand how a good animal powered farm is a system where everyone's getting something out of it. Um, the animals aren't working for my pleasure or, or, for my bottom line, they're working for themselves as well. And mm -hmm. that's the ideal. And I think um, when you work towards that ideal, it's a really beautiful thing. We started publishing the Draft Horse Wall Calendar 40 years ago. It quickly became a holiday tradition for families to give and receive our calendars. Many tell us it wouldn't be Christmas if there wasn't a Draft Horse Calendar under the tree. We've always found the best, most interesting photos showing a variety of Draft Horse breeds put to a wide range of tasks from threshing oats, making hay, logging hardwood, and performing before appreciative crowds. This year is no different, and the quality hasn't changed either. They cost $16.95 each, postage paid, and prices go down as you buy more. Give us your gift list and we can send them on your behalf. Visit www.ruralheritage.com to order, or call toll-free 877-647 2452. That's ruralheritage.com or 877-647-2452. The books Charlie writes and Chloe illustrates all have strong messages for the readers. The first book, Rosie's New Harness, was about the value of work and contributing to the team. The second book, Popcorn Day, has a similar but slightly different theme. And here Cassie has to overcome her fear. She doesn't like to be alone. She's used to being with a team. And she's being asked to go do this job um, by herself so that everyone else, uh, people and animals, can benefit that day. Mm -hmm. So, so she's having to be brave. So we're, we're kind of bringing in the brave element. I think being a team and working together is an underlying element with all your books. So that will always be there because it's about your team. Teamwork, yeah. Yeah. But I think there's, there's always going to be something different in each book also. So this would be more the brave, being brave. Yeah, I guess Stepping so. up to help. Stepping up to help, even though you're, you're doing something you've never done before. Yeah. Yeah. To promote their books as well as get feedback from school-aged children, their target audience, Charlie and Chloe have held book signings and other events at Charlie's farm or in schools and libraries. When they go on the road, they bring a donkey harness with them to show the kids. We had the kids try on Rosie's harness, the actual harness that the story is about. Um, and we had a second kid pretend to be the teamster. And that kid would have to guide, you know, Rosie, the donkey. Um, we would tell them they had to use G and haw and, and walk on and hoe. They, they couldn't use left and right, stop and start. And tell them, and the first one was at a lunchroom and had to just get this donkey 
a four-year-old kid to walk through the lunchroom without hitting anything. <laughs> really? Yes, with the reins and everything. Fun. It was awesome. And of course, every every child watching it thought it was the most hilarious thing ever, too. And it went really well. And kids, they they got to, to see the actual uh, harness that the story is about. But at the same time, they also got to talk to Chloe and ask her um, the same questions you just asked about the illustrations. How do you make an illustration? How do you draw mm -hmm. a donkey? Um, so we wanted to, and I wanted to kind of get the whole thing, um, encourage a, um, a young child, maybe to farm, but maybe to write a story about a farm, yeah. you know, all, all those things that you need. And, um, and not, not to be too high and mighty, but um, just get some of that passion and ideas across uh, to these young people. So. so how cool is it to have kids who, um, the, I mean, our typical stereotype of kids today are that they, they've got screens in front of them all the time playing yes. video games and they're not yeah. interested in the world around them. Right. Is that true? I don't... Do I feel that's true with kids today? Right. I do. <laughs> yes, I have this argument with my own children all the time because that is the norm. So they see their friends doing it, they want to do it, and, and, and of course I let my children play their games too, but I'm constantly making them shut it off and just be bored because that's what usually happens, I'm bored. Um, but then they start to notice all the things around them that they never do. So it's so, not a lost cause? No. No, absolutely not. But I think I think I think you have to be vigilant as adults and parents and teachers to make them shut those things off. And for what it's worth, so, uh, Chloe's family was here last night because we were working on the book, and I said I have to go cut some hay and feed it to the donkeys and get a old coat up. And and two of her kids, not all three, but two of them, <laughs> ran out with me. Yeah. And they just wanted to cut hay for the next hour. You know, we, we took my scythe, and, yeah. and little Charlotte was raking, not very well, but she was raking it. She was raking and, and bossing her brother around, yeah. Bossing her brother yeah. around, <laughs> and feeding it to the, to the animals. Yeah. We love that. So it's possible. Yeah. And that's in terms of the, the tactile experience of all being outside. Yeah. Yes. But then you've also got the, the concept of reading. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that is also a becoming more of a, turning pages in a book. It's yeah. becoming more of a lost... Um, experience. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. Yes, it is. But I think children's books, they still like to have that book in their hand. You know, they still want to lay there and look at the pictures while they're being read to. I don't really, I, I don't really see how you get that same feeling from an electronic book. So. Charlie explains that being an author of children's books is only one of many hats he wears on his farm. Everything, everything I do um, is working towards uh, staying on this farm. Do you have a job? Yeah, I, I have a I have the most complicated income stream imaginable. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, I uh, teach classes at the at the YMCA and another gym in town, and I have my uh, my maritime services business, which is which is kind of petering out. Um, I made a little bit of money off off of the off the book that I published, and I'm going to try to repeat that with um, the new cookbook and the new children's book, and um, selling some uh, some of this wheat and flour off the farm. Um, next week, I'm going to go up north and hire myself out as a horse trainer for a week, and I'll do a little uh, hoof trimming around town. So I think I've named at least six income streams if you're keeping track, um, and I guess that's par for the course for people on the farm these days. <laughs> <laughs> and because there aren't many implements designed to the scale of his operation, Charlie finds himself fabricating his own harrows, plows, sleds, and more. This is a, a drag that I built, and I started out, I realized I needed a digger of some sort, and, I, and I've got like an old, old spring tine section right behind us, or out back, and I, I just realized that spring tines, I didn't, I didn't like them, I, what I mean is, is the, the sea tine. And the, the tooth on a sea tine is like straight up and down where it hits the ground. And to me, it seemed like it was draft inefficient because it, it was just taking something along the ground like this, like that. And uh, Danish tines, S tines, are interesting to me because these sweeps are pointing forward. And, and of course, there's different things I can bolt on there, but they all have that same thing and that they're, they're kind of getting underneath and they're pointing forward. And, and to my experience, they're, they're, they're a little more draft e efficient. Problem is, I couldn't find a drag that had Danish tines on them. They all, they all have the old sea tines. Um, so this took some doing. You can, you can see I re-welded a bunch of stuff until I got the angles right. But, so this is just it's a real simple 
um, uh, Danish tying drag. Like I call it the, I call it the Danish drag, <clears throat> and it's sized for three donkeys. I mean, it's it's got a toolbar, and I, I can put whatever I want on there, but um, it basically will plow a path um, 18 inches wide, which is really just perfect for my, for my three donkeys. The three of them together weigh as much as a thousand pound saddle horse, I would say. You know, they have about that, that amount of pull. So um, in my quarter acre garden, we can just go up and down and, uh, and clear a spot to, to plant something. I didn't know that I'd ever be able to uh, do some good plowing here, but I learned that I could, that I could get a bottom. Okay, and the bottoms were built um, for a couple of different kind of walk behind tractors, like starting in the 30s and 40s, I think. This one came from um, David Brown. Was it David? No, David Bradley. I'm sorry, David, David Bradley. Um, was, a, was a line of walk behind tractors that was sold by Sears Roebuck for years and years. It's a six and a half inch mold board. And it's interesting, it was pulled behind a walk behind tractor that was about one and a half horse, originally had a one and a half horsepower motor. And that interested me because that's kind of in the scale of what three donkeys can do, you know. So we're, we're in that scale. So once, once you get down there, then it was just a matter of creating a system that the donkeys could pull and um, would hold it in the furrow. So I did, I did a couple of things. Um, so wheels, kind of like you'd see on a, on a sulky, only there's nobody, nobody's going to sit on this. Um, and then a mechanism for setting the depth and then pulling it out of the furrow. So on the, on the David Brown walk behind, David Bradley walk behind, they would set the depth with this little cranker here. So that, that, would, that would, you can see that's making the angle go up and down a little bit. And then at the end of the row, somehow they would pick the whole thing out of the ground. I don't know how I never saw it. But what I did was I created a little cam mechanism here so that um, when I, when I, when I want to start a row, I'll throw this forward, and now the, now the plow is in the ground. It's got to be adjusted, right? But, um, so, so that'll go plow, 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 plow. Mm -hmm. And then I get to the end of the row, and I just pull this up, and now it'll, it'll come out of the ground. Um, and if I need to go higher or lower for the next row, I'll just, I'll just change the crank. And then the only extra thing I found is I, I put this little arm out because when they, when they turn right, you know, plowing mostly is turning to the right all the time. That just keeps from, from tipping over. So this was, this was um, and you can see some starts and stops with different sure. things I was trying. <clears throat> but that, that's worked really well for uh, almost a full season now. And uh, I think I'll... Fun? Oh, plowing's a blast. I mean, it's playing in, it's the ultimate playing in dirt. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Charlie Tennyson has a passion for heritage crops, particularly wheat. He has collected and grown several heirloom varieties and now offers flour from these varieties on his farm and through his website, anarchyacres.com. For Charlie, it just makes good sense to protect the diversification of our small grains. The, the less genetic diversity, you always, have, you always have a risk for a catastrophic disease to come through. And um, it's more robust the more, the more genes are in the pool. So, uh, and you'll see that in an old variety of wheat. In a modern variety, if that thing grows 12 inches tall, they're all 12 inches tall. But in an older variety, there's, there's tall stalks, there's short stalks, there's some that fall over. Um, I think it's beautiful and I think it's more important. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, 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 um, I think there are things from the past that have been pushed aside too quickly. What do you teach at the Y? Um, just kind of mixed group group fitness classes. Uh -huh. um, I've, I've done it all once. Um, step step aerobics, um, regular aerobics. You know, uh, just kind of a fitness class. A lot of yoga now. Spin classes, and uh, something we were getting back to earlier, an idea. And I can't communicate this right, but it's a little puzzling to me. 
I'll stop doing something like, let's say, cutting hay on my farm and drive to the YMCA where people gather to do physical things. And I, I think there's not too many farmers at the YMCA because <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. You've just left an area where you, the exercise comes free and you've gone to a place where somebody's going to tell you how to exercise or teach you how to exercise. It's a little ridiculous. Uh, I enjoy it, and of course, I, uh, living alone on a farm, I desperately need the, uh, the social interaction that the, that the YMCA uh, and other gyms provide, so I'm going to keep doing that. Um, but you kind of see one aspect of modern life that's gotten a little crazy. For more information about Charlie, Chloe, Sebastian, Cassie, and Rosie, and the rest of the team at Anarchy Acres, visit anarchyacres.com, where you can order copies of Rosie's New Harness and Popcorn Day directly from the author. The books are also available on Amazon.com, as well as the Rural Heritage Bookstore. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319 319- 362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press which also offers a complete line of back to the land books, DVDs and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.